Appamada's programmes and facilities are supported through your generosity. Your support really does make a huge difference. You'll find a link for contributions on the website at appamada.org forward slash contribute. Thank you so much. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi, Maria. For those in the US, I hope you're having a good Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. I hope everyone who went uh, enjoyed the Jizo ceremony. So I guess let's begin. Very good. Well, uh, let's do check-ins. Maria, you're okay. first up. Um, yeah, so I'm on the, what am I up to? Yeah, last week I'd finished the um, middle line. Great. Yeah. Going all the way around. So I am now beginning the outer, the outer line going all the way around. So it's just like sort of how far from the edge would I saw that? And probably putting a chalk line in is a good idea, is it? Just to guide it. it. You could absolutely use a chalk line. Um, you wouldn't be the first. It's very similar to when you're attaching the um, second line when you're doing the face. Um, mm -hmm. Every time you had you were folding under just that seam allowance and sewing down that seam, it's very very similar. So you're going to sew as close as you can. Um, you want so if, if this is where the material begins to curve over to start to become the back of the, the frame you're not going to want to sew beyond where it's flat if that makes sense so as close as you reasonably can to the edge but never where you begin to see the fabric is, is starting to, uh, to to bend so that it can go around or crease yeah yeah and i best do chart lines i'm not good at straight lines <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you could definitely do a chalk line um although i will point out maybe when you put your straight edge down let me put on the camera for this when you put your straight edge down if you find that your straight edge is much straighter than the edge of the rakasu itself just try to sew along the edge of the rakasu in that case the chalk line could definitely add the benefit of giving you that visual kind of cue for how long to make the stitch. But if it's gonna be, I feel like it would stand out more if you had some, like here, you can see there's some inconsistency in the width of the, the frame. And I just, I did just kind of keep going, but that, it, that visually stands out to me on, on this one that I've been working on here and I mean it's it's so minor I would I'm not giving myself a hard time about this but that is one of the things when you're making a decision on a chalk line or not that you could if you see there's parts where the straight edge is straighter than the, than the fabric yeah yeah and as, as you're saying that John I'm kind of looking at my rack suit and I don't think it's dead straight yeah. <laughs> you know the two outer sides like the two outer sides, I just thought you won't be able to, but they're not dead straight. They're just kind I mean, of, there is a do. slight curve to the right side, I think, you know, just a slight, you can see. So yeah, so it's probably it's just best to follow the edge, isn't it? Without going to the edge edge. Yeah, and if you're if you're comfortable doing that, if you find inconsistency in, in the length of your stitch, you might consider that going back to the chalk line, but trying without sounds like the, the smart yeah. 
Yeah, I'll have a go without and see see how I get on. Great. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. John. Uh -huh. Thank you. Rosemary, how about you? I thought I was where Maria is, but I actually have another um, another uh, side to do on my middle. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm at. I have one more side to do in the middle, but I'm good. Good. Oh. Shelly, how about you? I've just started stitching my A pieces together. Yeah. And uh, I think I'm having my stitches are too close because I seem to need more thread than I should, right? Maybe so. so. Uh, so you're saying that you're measuring out three times the length that you're sewing and you're coming up short. Yeah. So that might be the closeness of the stitch. Yeah, that it could be that if you're, is the stitch the right, you know, uh, I would actually suspect the length of the stitch first, as opposed to the closeness, the proximity. Well, I had to, when I did the first one, I had to take it out because I wasn't catching the the bottom, like the two pieces were not always catching together. So mm -hmm. I took it out and it, it's better this time. Okay. It's my first one, so I'm it's a work in progress. But yeah. do I do this this edge at the bottom at the same time, or do I do all of these on the one, two, three, four, five, and then come back and do the fold? Do all five uh, okay. and then come back and, and do the fold. Okay. It's all a work in progress. And I'm having trouble with the knots at the end. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if I have to use that style or if I can use one I used when I did embroidery. Please use what works. Okay. I was showing what works for me um, for people who have no experience with needle or thread. And um, that's just the one I'm comfortable teaching. But by all means, okay. a knot is a knot, and there's no, you know, you're not going to be kicked out of Zen Club for, for using the wrong knot. I I just have to say that uh, the concentration required to create the stitch and to chant at the same time as mm. it's happening takes me to a whole other place. I'm mm. really enjoying it. Wonderful. That sounds like a. Uh, I, I also go to another place and for me it's nice and I hope it's nice for you too. Marla, how about you? I'm continuing to frame <laughs> and the interesting thing of course is being by myself, I freak myself out, I do something and then I go, oh my god that's all wrong and I go back and I read and I watch, <laughs> I undo it and then I'm like, oh no I was right the first time. Um, so anyway, I'm having fun with it though. It's probably staving off Alzheimer's, all of that thinking. And um, so that for that, I'm grateful. And to Maria, I have a question and it may be a koan, but when you said that you should, you should, when you're sewing, sew it along the edge, but not the edge edge. I'm wondering what you mean, the edge edge. <laughs> <laughs> I think that um, John was saying on the outer line to not to not go over the fold bit where it goes around the back. So just to stay, make sure you're staying on the front as sort of near, nearer to the edge, but on the front, but not going over. Is that right, John? So not the, yeah. And John was yeah. not <laughs> in obviously understanding you as was Rosemary. And so I all of a sudden thought, oh dear, I need to know what is the edge edge. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Hi everybody. Uh, so I had to miss last week because I was on holiday and I've only just had time to watch the video of last week up to the bit where the, you ended with the newbies and you, you were on to doing squares and um, ah, and that was challenging enough. So I managed to pin, that's my, my A, can you see it? Yes. And on the back, the B is upside down. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Is that right? That is right. Yeah. Okay. So then I got I don't got overconfident, and I started because I got to the bit where you said do all of them because I was thinking oh I've got to sew this now, and then you said do all of them, so I did two, and I got it lined up beautifully, but I didn't do your pinching. So whilst my front looks like that and it's perfectly you, lined you up, pull it up. 
sorry, my front looks like that. Ah. Okay, which is perfectly lined up. But the back, mm. the two, the two B is the right way up, and it should be the wrong way up, shouldn't it? I think so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you've caught it quickly, so that's. Uh... Well, no, no. I mean, I caught that, and then I thought, oh no, because <laughs> if you do the pinching, and I couldn't work out what the purpose of the pinching was, it's to yeah. make sure that one's one way up, one's the other way up, isn't it? Yeah. So I've learned a lot. So where I am now is just unpinning my perfectly lined up two and getting it the right way up it's uh you'll have lots of practice by the time and you get to a, five you'll have done okay and i have a question to help me because i i printed out the bits of the relevant written instructions and it don't think it answers this question with all of them is it the second line on the a the second line on the a marrying up with the just below the first line on the B. Yes. That's is right. it always that's right. that? It is always that. So and the, the back's always upside down. I think so. Um, looking at it now, two and and four are both where the A is longer. And then the one, three, and five, the A is shorter. And I have both of them. And in both cases, they are upside down. Yes. Yeah. I've okay, never actually that's... given thought to that, but Jess, you're right. <laughs> You needed me to get it wrong. So there you go. You've given thought to it now. Well, I developed the pinch and lift and it was kind of like, okay, everything else is superfluous because it just works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. Um, yes, yes. So it sounds like you've got a, a good grasp. And I would even go so far as to say the second line of the top piece goes to the first line of the bottom piece and A is always on top. So yes, you're, you've married the two uh, you'll you'll need the other wording when it comes to attaching one to two to three to four uh, because there is an order there where three is on top of two and four. Okay, I'm not and there so, yet. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but it's um. Okay, it sounds but it's like you've always got it. upside down. It's always upside yeah. down on the back. Right. And you've got it. That's right. Thank you. Thanks, John. Yeah. Ellen, how about you? Oh, I think we missed the name, John. Oh, Ellen. Yes. I'm a little confused because I had a I had a, a sewing lesson at the Chapel Hill Zen Center yesterday. Mm -hmm. And Jacoco uh, said, oh, can you see this? Said I'm ready to do the squares and they've been based it on. Yeah, there you go. But but don't aren't I supposed to have a middle line like Maria was was Maria to, isn't there supposed to be a middle line on the frame like top and the bottom and then a middle? There is yeah yeah they may do it in a different order I Maybe don't think it do it in a different order yeah yeah because you could definitely still do the middle you could do what you're doing now with the squares first then the middle then the outer okay and it would still work it looks like you know there's plenty of room uh, outside yeah, of those squares of so. Room. Would you, because they're basted, you can either sew them now uh -huh. and come back to the the middle and the edge, okay. or you can do the middle and edge, just leave them basted and return to them when it's okay. the order that we go in, well, as you prefer. I, I think I'll go ahead and do the, well, hmm, maybe I should go ahead and start the middle, because I just heard you say that, uh, that, uh, the, uh, that you talk about sewing the squares on the, on the video. So maybe mm. I could look at the video for the squares. Yeah, you could do that. Have you basted the um, have you basted the diagonals? The diagonal? Yeah, this seam here on the this seam here on the corners. It's, um, have you have you basted these at all? Not only basted that they're sewn. They're sewn. So go ahead and before you do anything else, you'd be at the corners or the the middle or the outer. Go ahead and just do one temporary basting stitch on each of the corners. That will help you make right, sure that the right interfacing. There. Right there, corner. No, so all the way along this oh, diagonal. Okay. And that will help you make sure. So when you have that on all four corners, it will help you make sure that the interfacing and the silk stay neatly packaged um, and, and straight inside of the frame. So that as you do whatever you choose to do next, 
um, whether it be the corners or the frame, you can make sure that your interfacing and your silk is straight because you have these corners basted, these corner stitches. Okay. Do you have questions on that? Well, yes, lots. I mean, more than I think we can do. You do. Wanna, do you want to see it up close, Ellen? Because mine are still in there. If no, it's just I'm getting different information from different people, that kind of confusion. Mm, yeah. So I don't know. Um, I, I think maybe I'll, I mean, as much as I love being with you guys, I don't want to waste your time. I think what I'm going to do is start start on the, the little sewing this the uh, squares since uh, that's what she told me to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, not that she knows any more than you do, but I'm going to see her again pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I think maybe I'll go ahead and, and drop out today and look at the uh, video. Okay. On the squares, because I don't want to waste y'all's time learning how to sew the squares if I can look at the video. And if you choose to work with an in-person group, I mean, that's such a blessing to have that in-person group. But so is so. this, so <laughs> I identify with both groups, so this is good. Thank you, John. And I, I just wanted to add, Ellen, that the basting of the diagonal corners is basically just like pinning the inner linings in place of the rakasu. Yeah. If that makes sense. Okay. I guess. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'll shut up, I'll shut up. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll... Okay. Put this all together and figure it out. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Ellen. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Sophie, how about you? It's good to meet you. I think this is the first time you've been able to join. Uh, well, hello, everyone. Yeah, it's my first time being able to join, and I'm afraid. <laughs> um, I uh, also because I've just looked at uh, at the first video, and I've did, just done some. Uh, some training stitches. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I feel like I will. It will take me time. It's the timing is not great for me, but uh, so it's going to be hard to come on the Sundays. So probably I'll look at the. I'll download the videos and look at them, and then try to come when I can. But it's it's not a good timing. Yeah. I'm. And, if you'd like, I, I'm happy. I'm always available via email as well. Uh, so um, there's, and this is, goes to everyone, uh, any at any stage for any question, feel free to email me with questions. Oh, thank you, thank you. But nevertheless, I thought I don't want to miss the opportunity because I, I have time today. So I thought I'll just come and meet all of you. And so, and maybe practice my stitches for now. <laughs> Great. Yeah. You can practice, and if you get to um, the point of pinning, and we're uh, just come off mute and ask, and I'll be happy to show you the pinning. Um, if you've already cut, if you haven't cut, we can discuss that as well. Yeah, I haven't cut yet. Yeah, yeah, I didn't there. <laughs> Matt, well, when you get to um, when you've done about that fifty centimeters of practice stitches, just go ahead and show me or or send me an email while we're in class, and I'd be happy to to explain it while we're here together. Super. Thank you so much. Of course. And Sophie, please do feel free to just pop in and out of the Sundays whenever you can. Yes. Yeah. You know, it, it's fine if you can't for a few weeks and then you can, or, you know, just we're here. <laughs> Mostly where I am staying, it, there's a, another stable connection. So maybe mm -hmm. I could join, but if it's, I, I might lose you and then I think it's disturbing. So I, I'll come when I know the connection is good. It's okay with me if you're in and out. It doesn't bother me. It's uh, I will notice, but it's not. That's that's part of Zoom life. We're 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 accustomed. Yeah, and I'm used to letting people in and out all the time that drop out. There are a couple of people that drop out quite a bit, and I just let them in again. So don't let that worry, worry okay. you. Oh, thank you, thank you. So I'll, I'll I'll give it a try from up there and see how it works. Yeah, yeah. thank you. And Sue. Last but certainly not least, how are you today? Hi everyone. Um, lovely to see you, Sophie. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I I've pinned them all and started sewing, and and I keep going into doubt whether I've done it correctly or not. Um, I'm learning a lot around um, my learning process. 
it's like what I do know about myself is I'm rubbish at following directions and I'm not very good with detail. I tend to want a bigger picture and then work inwards. Anyway, so it's challenging doing it the different way. And, and I can't always promise that I remember to say the chant when I'm stitching. So that's another mindfulness thing I need to be able to do as well, as well as all this work in an opposite way to what I usually work. So I'm, I'm pinning and sewing. I thought I'd got them all pinned and then I go into doubt. So um, I think I'll just try and get them right, really. Um, the, the, sti any... the stitching's a treat. I really enjoy doing that. It's just mm. the um, following instruction. What confused me to begin with, because I was reading the instructions, and on the, on the diagram um, where it says joining pieces, it said the first line, and from the diagram it looks like the first line was the cut line. And, and so that confused me to begin with. It doesn't take much. Um, yes, the, the photos there are, the, 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 you're talking about the digital, um, the, the white lines that were added yes. being, yeah, they're all about a centimeter off from the ones that are drawn in the photo. And that yeah. is, that confused me as well. And oh. I think, um, but, uh, I do, I do trust that I understand this part of it uh, well. So if the, the pinch and lift and the second line of A to the first line of B, if that's clear to you. Yeah. So if the pinch and lift, have you got the two letters, the two number and letters together when you pinch and lift or where they've been? Where they were cut is oh, what right. that. Yeah, that's right. No, I had got that right. You see, I'm going into doubt. Yes, you've got 4A and 4B. Yes, that's right. That's what I've got in front of me at now. And then I'll pinch it and bring it. What? Oops, if I can do it. And lift. And then I'm going to slide it down. So that my second line of A is roughly with my first line of B. Yes, it looks so simple when I watch you do it. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I I hope that, does that give you yes. confidence here today? Yeah. Okay. Thank Good. you. Yes. Okay, then that is everyone. If there are no further questions, then we can sew together for a bit. We have, an, we have one more of Hillary. Oh. Yes, Hillary. Hand. Okay, um, this amount that you sew, that you, you pin it so that on the B side, um, it's slightly below the chalk line, nearer That's the right. cut edge of the fabric. That's In right. the written instructions, it said four millimetres and you've been saying one to two. So I, I've made it smaller than four millimetres. Um, how, how, how much does it matter if does each of your bits have to have like, if, if my ones are two millimeters and my twos are three millimeters or how, how crucial is it that they're exactly the same? What matters is consistency between each of them, but I would say within two millimeters. So if, you're, if you have one where it's one to two and one where it's two to three that you stay between, I don't think that that will, will show in the final garment. There's a couple of different steps that, um, so the, the, the frame is custom measured. So it will be based on the real finished measurements of your face. So that's one thing. And then we will also redraw the outer perimeter once all of the pieces of the face are together. And those two steps make it so that any inconsistencies or any variation between say I do four or five millimeters and you do one or two or two or three, they will, there are steps that account for those differences so that everything is, so you, um, I would say you said you have some that are one to two and some that are two to three, is that right? Um, 
well they're va they're varying some might be even less than than some might be just one because um it did say four millimeters on the instructions but i think you were saying about two weren't you yeah we do ann and i yeah. teach two to two or three um yeah. and you can see in my example i'm at about two maybe three above okay you probably can't see those but they're slightly different they're not exactly the same can you see them yeah you yours kind of span the the line there it's above the line they, where does it in. go in oh you can't see it um where does so it go in on the a side on the a side right in the middle of the crosshairs and then on the b side just above that one's closer that's like back. okay so you're pinning you're pinning um your pins are going the opposite direction from mine yours are going towards the top of the a piece is that no right? no no they're not i was showing you one that had stuck in all my pins are going the way you said so they haven't okay. got big bubbles on the end but they're going the way you said but you and you're saying they're going straight through the crosshairs no those aren't this oh, one okay. Here, okay this one here that can you see there's an extra pin uh -huh. yes yes i see i do that's going straight through the crosshairs on the a side uh, and i see is it closer to the edge on the b side and i'm just saying that it's going to be As impossible to get them exactly the same on the different pieces yeah Does it that is them? challenging with the pinning of the initial pins going straight through the crosshairs i think that uh, that that is the step that i think simplifies it um for the way that okay. this is is right. i think that's why this original this guidance was was offered in the first place was okay. just for that visual that visual I'll check. put them straight through the crosshairs then but kind of because i've checked by sticking pins in in each of the crosshairs i know mm -hmm my distance is and I thought it'd be easier to sew if the pins weren't actually on the line it I'll might take be. out the ones I've poked through I think because the, the stitch is relatively small if you see the um, this stitch here the second one yeah. is so close to where that pin was that removing the pin it still would be securely fastened yeah okay. so that's it that's an option as well Okay, thanks, John. Thank you. Clarifying? Yeah, thanks. Okay.
quick reminder, this should be a three. This is not the one piece, but a three piece. Um, and I don't have a, my chalk pencil. I need to order a new one. So at this phase, once you have, uh, once you have your, your, your stitches done, you have all five of this first stitch from the second line of A to the first line of B. Once all of those are done, the next phase will be to get out your iron, an ironing board, and press these, uh, press this seam flat so that it's, it's flat the way uh, you see it here. You will then, as a second step, do, actually, let me consider that, that wording. How do I actually do this? I'm speaking maybe too flippantly. So what I do is I gently just finger press this flat so that it stays flat so I can work with it. At the crosshairs, I take the my fingers and pinch it so I, I lift this material up and pinch so that the chalk line is facing directly towards me and just gently get in kind of a, a working seam here. Something that will allow me to, to see what I'm doing when I get to the, the iron. And then I'm going to attempt to line up this chalk line so that it is just barely covered by, I, the, I don't, if I can avoid it, I don't want the chalk line to be exposed, but I also want the folded edge to be as near as possible to it as when it's everything has been pressed down. And so I will get it like this, and then I will press it. This is the, the configuration that I will press. Once it is pressed, I will then pin. I will pin it just as we've pinned before. And I prefer, this is something I've always advised personal preference on, but I prefer sewing with the folded edge facing away from me. That is my preference. And so my, that, then my second preference is to, when I have pins coming uh, directly vertical, to do it so that it is facing me. So. If that is the case, I'm going to pin like this. I'm going to go in just below that seam. I'll, I'll do an example. This should be pressed before I do this, but I would go in roughly here. And then, whoops, I haven't gone through all the way on the back. Okay. And then I will come up through the vertical line. And at this phase, you can no longer do a, a check to see if it's vertical to vertical on the back, but you can know that it's vertical to vertical just based on this line here on the front. And uh, I don't think on these small pieces it makes a, a huge amount of difference, but it's often a good measure to pin the outer sides first and then one in the middle. In this case, it's so small that those terms hardly make much difference but I'm going to do my best to stick with best practices. So one on each outside edge first, then one in the middle and then the rest. And that helps you prevent from putting a, a bubble or a bulge in your material somewhere. And again, I, I'm going to press this before I final, do my final pinning on these. But this is the, this is the approach. So in summary, first, um, the first step I did was to go from this to this, just hand flattening this down just so that it stays and is, is easy to work with. Then I hand pinch this seam so that it's almost as though I want this edge to be the peak of a mountain, and I want the, um, the chalk line to be a trail to go along that edge. So I want it, the, the chalk line to be on the fold itself. And then get that close like that, then press, then pin. You don't want to 
press over your pins because you'll get a nice shiny mark where the pin was. So we want to avoid that if possible. And that's the basics of it. Is there anyone who's in the new cohort who has questions about this phase? You might know it when you get there. I have a question, John. Yes, actually. So if, um, if I'm folding that correctly, the bottom chalk line is not visible and the chalk line that you folded, you can kind of see yeah. once I press just, it, right? Just barely there on the edge. So, um, so yes, yeah, so once you're, you've pressed it, you can barely see that chalk line on the edge, but the one on the, on the bottom at, won't be, at least won't be visible from okay. face on. Okay, thank you. And I'm going to go get my ironing board. Actually, I'm going to keep sewing. John? John? Yes. Um, as I'm pinning on the frame my first uh, X's, according to the instructions or the picture, oh, the picture in the instructions shows the pins both with the heads of the pins both going the same way. And I don't know if that's material or, I mean, if that's important or if it's not. So what, what I've found is in order to have better accuracy pinning on the lines of the X's, mm -hmm. my pin heads start at the point of the X and then I go in from the seam allowance towards the middle and I'm getting greater accuracy that way. It's harder for me, it seems, to do it the way the picture in the instructions is. Is that a big deal? I don't think it's a big deal. The, the way you're doing it, if it gives you accuracy, and importantly, I think the big distinction is so you're pinning exactly line to line, right? Right. You're going to be sewing a um, kind of a, a running stay stitch just above the line. So as long as, I do recommend, if possible, get them in the, um, the pins in the direction you will be sewing, just so you don't poke yourself as you're working. The, the way I have them now, they're going in opposite directions. So the, the points of the pins meet in the middle of that line that I'm pinning. Right, because so, you've come from the, 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 right. the curve, right. I don't think, just be careful when you're when you're sewing. Okay. Try okay. Not to... If it's just danger to my fingers, it's not a big deal to me. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a. Uh, and I just sent you an email. By the way, I keep forgetting to ask you where you got your thimble because I've gone down the deepest rabbit hole possible on Amazon trying to find one like you have. Okay. Yeah. Um. It's so Dritz. Any... Pardon me. Yeah. I'll... It's Dritz brand. D R I T Z. Okay. Um. I'll see if I can find a link here and. Then class and if I if I, I'll send it in the chat. Thank you. I want to get one or more before I start those long stretches mm. of sewing because my fingers will hurt. Sure, sure. Thank you. Uh -huh. Let me get that now.
I know we start with a lot of, of chatting with the check-ins, but we are at the hour mark. So open conversation for uh, any topic that anyone wants to talk about. Well, I've been dreading this outer line and it's turned out to be the most enjoyable, easiest line. <laughs> <laughs> It's something about having an edge to go by, isn't there? That's really helpful. <laughs> it's funny how it confounded your expectations like that. Yeah, I really expected it to be really difficult. I mean, that was, and I was like, oh gosh, I really don't want to get to that outer line. And uh, yeah, it's been the, and it's the, my best line. You know, when I compare it to the others, it's what I would call my bestest, neatest line. It must be that it's the edge edge. That, that's it. That's what it's about. It's the edge, edge. <laughs> I'm oh, good at edge goodness. edges. <laughs> at the edge of the edge. <laughs> oh, Do you me. mean the practice edge of the edge? Is that, <laughs> is that the joke? <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. So that's been really surprising. What well, we I'm expect to be difficult and what we expect to be easy is often not the case. you use this this you go through the the, the eye like this and then yes. you you thread through yes exactly thank you that's all i needed i was trying to put the thread and the never mind thank you i don't need to stop that john <laughs> uh let me see if i can if i can do it and let me actually uh try it because I, I might be talking out of, of uh, another bit so let me because I've actually got one of those and never, ever used it. I thought, well, what do you do with that? I think. Oh, he's right. That's the way <laughs> That's the way it works. And now, thank God. Anyone need some? Because I will gladly mail you 400 of them. Did you, how, how how many? <laughs> they sent me oh, a box wow. completely full. It's ridiculous. Oh, I guess if you're, not if you're a sewing teacher. Oh, my goodness. I mean, Seriously, I'll send you a lot if you need them. <laughs> yeah, so it, it appears to work. So I, I threaded the, let me see if I can undo it. I threaded the thread through the little wire opening, then yeah. pull the wire oh, yeah. through. Wow, that's clever, isn't it? Yeah. And it so really buddy. works when you remember. Yeah. How to do it. I, I have so, that's really good for fine needles isn't it rather than using a bigger eye yeah probably this and is for still... old people <laughs> it's still tricky to to line this up the, the benefit i think is that this wire is pretty stiff um so it's not going to move out of the way on you but the, it is still it doesn't make the eye of the needle any larger no it's not easy but it's a lot easier than just stabbing at thin air for hours gosh yeah john can i just go back to basics yes and and ask for a refresher on exactly where you put the needle in for the uh, namikibutsu stitch so do you start on the line with the top top of it and then under the line for the bottom of the stitch or is it is it over the line and under the line just a hair over to just a hair under. Um, just a hair over to just a hair under. Okay. So I'll insert the needle. Oof, stab myself. Let me do one. Well, uh, 
Actually, so to start, uh, you're gonna come from the bottom and go up above the line. Yeah. And then once you've got it up above the line, you're actually coming out from here and then you're going, or uh, you're going to go back in below the line. Wait, I should confirm. Hillary, are you right-handed or left-handed? Because that I'm matters. I'm right-handed, I'm right-handed. Okay, so then this is, this is what it will look like in the middle of a stitch once you're started, where you will have gone in below the line and come out above the line three to four millimeters away. But you begin by coming up above the line with the yeah. knot on the back. Yeah, so that's just above the line and then you go back on yourself just below the line. That's exactly right. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thought I might as well get the basics right before I start. Well, you, yeah, the value of practice stitches, it cannot be oversold. Yeah. Um. Yes. I'm just working on my my uh, pressing and pinning. Mm -hmm. And I'm confused about the direction of the pins. Does the, the letter, you said something about pin in the direction that you're going to sew? Uh, for this, so. It, yes, pin with the direction you're going to sew in mind. For me, it is easiest, and you may not have, I don't think you've you probably, well, at this point you have never sewn um, right up on this edge like this. The, the stitch will sit on top of the seam like this, where uh, just like we were talking about with Maria, you're not crossing over the fold. You're staying all entirely on the top piece. And I am most comfortable sewing this way with that folded edge facing away from me. And so if the folded edge is facing away from me as I'm sewing, I prefer to have the pins facing toward myself. Still pinning vertical line to vertical line and using the vertical line as a kind of source of truth, so to speak, and the pin as for that same purpose as well, just to help everything be straight and, and aligned. Uh, but this way, as my hand is coming over this way, I don't have that point facing. Is that clear? Yeah, that's that clear. Clarify? Have you started one of these? Have you started stitching one of these that you just did? No, but I can now. These are I'm doing these in cotton just as demonstration pieces. So I'm going to skip the pressing, although that is preferred. Let me just get two pins in. Maybe I'll pull this line of stitches and, and then press. But I'll get started so I can show what I mean. Okay, so that's the pinning I did. I'm not, I'm close to the folded edge, but not dead on because you do, as you can tell, you can cut, you do kind of uh, introduce a bend to the material. And I don't want to get too close to that and, you know, uh, sew that in. That may not be clear, but. Um, no, I get it. Okay, okay. Let me get cotton. Everything on the face is you do start with a knot. So I'm going to do that real quick. So 
So once you've got your knotted thread, so imagine there is a chalk line just about here relative. So as though this chalk line were right around here. So that I'm going to be coming out very, very close on the top. I'll be coming out very, very close to the, the folded edge and then jumping over. So to begin that, I'm gonna come from the below and try to catch the first row of threads running horizontally that are not starting to kind of bend over with the vertical threads. I don't, that's really hard to describe what I'm just, what I'm trying to communicate, but uh, close, but not all the way on the line. So then trying to keep a, a consistent length of stitch before when I had that chalk line, I will begin the actual stitch itself. So I've gone in about the size and length of, of my stitch that I've been doing down here. And I come up again, very, very near to that folded edge. So the finished stitch, once you don't catch the fabric, will look like Namakibutsu stitch, but right up against that folded edge. I'll do, a, do another. I'll remove the pin because I'm so close to, I'll cross it. One thing that helped me do this, I have a tendency to be real crooked over and, and hold my face real close to the fabric as I'm sewing, which is why, <laughs> why my sewing gets out of camera so often is because I'm pulling it close to my face. Um, this, uh, I, I can actually barely see some of the threads. Uh, I have to get like this close to actually see them, but I try to remember three or four um, threads in each direction is roughly the, the, the dimension of, of mine. And uh, holding it at a reasonable distance, I can kind of eyeball that. That may be meaningless to you, I don't know. No, that makes sense. You're talking about the grain of the fabric, right? That's right, yeah. yeah. If, you can, if you can see it, you can tr kind of use it as a, a visual guide. In fact, the, the grain itself makes a roughly 45 degree angle between those openings where there's the gap in the grain. And uh, that can actually be a useful, a useful reference. So can age and you have to hold it a little further away. <laughs> yeah, okay. well, that's, uh, that's good to know. I'm, uh... Trom trombone, uh, trombone uh, fabric looking. I'm as about as nearsighted as you can get. So I don't think that that's going to, um, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to have that benefit. I think I'm just going to go to where I, I need readers for 100% of everything. Uh, but that's the card I've been dealt. So is that clear? The, yes. the steps for this? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for asking. We're at the end of our time now, John. Oh, thank you, Maria. Keeping me respectful of others' time. <laughs> By you being respectful of others' time. Okay. It gets absorbing, doesn't it? And you forget time. <laughs> yeah, that was the, these squares. You're def they're definitely a um, hold your tongue correctly kind of a operation. They're, they're another one that I'm thinking, oh, I won't be able to do them. So that's the expectation. <laughs> you will, you will. I was definitely have, yeah, I was having to go all the way down and then all the way up as two separate strokes though. It's, it's a lot of material. Okay, well, good to see everyone. I hope to see you all soon. Maybe not next week, but don't go more than a month. I'll miss you. <laughs> thank you, John. Yeah, thank, thank you. So one to the altar and one to each other.
and good to see you. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Well. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye. Happy bye. Sophie. Happy, happy sewing. Lovely to see you all. Yeah. <laughs> I see you soon. Bye.